Hey guys, I'm Matt, a developer from Ohio, and in this video, I'll be walking you through the RGB to hex converter project. To complete this project, you'll need to be familiar with data structures, control flow, bitwise operations, and list slicing. Let's get started. In this project, we're going to build a command line utility that can convert between RGB values and hex values. Both of these are formats that store color data as three chunks of 8 bits each. We'll get more into the specifics later on, but we'll need to use bit shifting to move our 8-bit chunks around. Our project will have three functions, which we will refer to as methods. RGB to hex, hex to RGB, and a method that talks to the user. First, we'll create the RGB to hex method. We'll call this method RGB underscore hex. Use DEF to define we'll call it RGB hex with no parameter. We should always expect that users might make mistakes when inputting values. Because we'll need it later, we'll go ahead and save a string to use as an error message in case of invalid inputs. We'll save a new variable, invalid message, and save a string here, such as invalid value entered. Now we need to get the RGB value that will convert to hex. We'll prompt the user for each value, R, G, and B, one at a time by using the raw input function. We'll also need to convert the user's input from a string into a number using the int function. Let's start with R. We'll save red as int, which is going to convert it into a number. And inside of this, we'll use raw input. And I'll use a string here with just r and a colon, so that the user knows to put in the r value. Each of RGB's three values represents a color, red, green, and blue. These values can be anywhere from 0 to 255, where a higher value indicates that more of the color is mixed in. Before I move on to green and blue, we'll verify that our user inputted a value in the valid range by using an if statement and two conditions connected by an or. So we'll use if we're checking if red is either lower than 0 or if it's higher than 255, because those will be out of the range of valid values. If the user did enter an invalid value, we can use the invalid message variable that we saved earlier. Inside the if block, we'll print this out and then return. Using return with no value, we'll just exit our method. So inside of our if statement, I will print invalid message, and we can just return. Now we can move on to the green and blue parts of RGB. We'll do G next. We can prompt the user for a value in exactly the same way as in step three. So we'll get green equals int raw input, and this time I'll use a G for green. Green should also be between zero and 255, so we'll use the same error handling that we did for red in steps four and five. All we have to do is replace the red variable with the green variable. So I'll copy and paste this block. And in the pasted version, I'll make sure to change red to green. Blue will once again prompt the user, just like in step three. So blue equals int raw input b for blue. We'll add one last error handling block for blue, just like in steps four and five. I'll paste that in and change these to blue. Now we can get started on the logic that will convert an RGB value to a hex value. A hex value is a base 16 number that will hold all three of our RGB subvalues. How does that work? If you recall the lessons on binary, a bit is either zero or one, which lets us count to two. 2 bits lets us count to 4, 3 lets us count to 8, and so on. With 8 bits, we can count to 256, which might sound familiar because it's the maximum value of an RGB subvalue. We checked for 255 in our invalid value handling because we started at 0 instead of 1. Anyway, a hex value can store 4 bits per digit. That's the special power it gets from being base 16. So every 2 hex digits can store 8 bits, or 1 color. A six-digit hex value can store all three of our colors. 
So we'll be converting to a six digit hex value where every two digits represents one color. I know that's a lot to take in, but it should start to make more sense once we move the bits around. If you need more info, there's a link included in this task's instruction. Okay, now we actually get to do the conversion. We'll create a variable called val, short for value, which will hold our hex value. We'll add together the red, green, and blue variables, then use bit shifting to make sure that each has exactly eight bits of space. So I'll start here by setting val equal to red plus green plus blue. Blue can stay where it is. Move green one place to the left by using bit shifting, this, and we'll move red two places to the left by using bit shifting like this. Because each place is eight bits, we use eight to shift green by one, and we use 16 to shift red by two. So now blue is offset by zero, green is offset by one, and red is offset by two, so they each have their own space. Now we're just going to print out our hex value. To make sure it's displayed as a hex value, we'll use the hex function, which is just like the int function we used above. We're also going to discard the first two characters of this hex value because it will begin with the 0x prefix, just like binary values begin with the 0b prefix. We can discard these two characters using list slicing. And just to keep it looking sharp, we'll apply the upper function, which will make all the letters uppercase. Why are there letters in our value? Because hex is base 16, we run out of numbers after 10, so we use the first few letters of the alphabet to get us the rest of the way to 16. We count 9, 10, A, B, C, D, E, F. So we're going to be printing out val. We want to make sure that we're printing out the hex version of val. Then we're going to use list slicing to cut off that prefix, and we'll wrap the whole thing here in parentheses, and then use upper to make sure that all the letters are uppercase. That's it for our RGB to hex conversion. We'll be adding a method to handle this conversion the other way too, which will be hex to RGB. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this method, and beneath it, I'm going to add another function definition for hex RGB. We'll prompt the user for a hex value. We won't use the int function this time because like we discussed in task 12, there will be letters in this value. So we'll save that as hex val, and we'll get raw input of a hex value. Because we're converting to RGB, we need exactly 24 bits in our hex value. That's eight bits per color. A hex value stores four bits per digit, so our hex value needs to be exactly six digits long. We can handle one possible invalid input by using an if statement to check if the user's inputted value is not six characters. So we'll check if the length x val is not exactly six. Inside the if block, we'll print a message indicating that an invalid value was entered, then return, just like we did in task five. So I'll go ahead and print invalid value, and then I'll use return. If the value is exactly six characters, we can use the int function with 16 as the second parameter to convert our hex string into a base 16 number. So I'll add an else block, and inside of here, I'll set hex val to int hex val as the first parameter and 16 as the second parameter. Before we can start grabbing RGB values out of our base 16 number, we'll save a variable called two hex digits. Recall that two hex digits is eight bits, which is how much space a color occupies. We're going to use this value to cut out eight bit portions of our hex value. So I'm going to save two hex digits here, and that will be two to the power of eight. And that's going to be eight bits because each bit is a base two number. In task 11, we showed how red, green, and blue are set in a six-digit hex value. We left blue alone, shifted green by one space, and shifted red by two spaces. The same applies here, so we can save the blue value now before we start using bitwise operations to get to green and red. We'll use the modulo operator to get two hex digits worth of data from hexval. 
And that's going to look like this. Blue is equal to hex val modulo two hex digits. And that's going to give us our first eight bits worth of data, which is our blue color. To get to green, we need to shift left by eight bits. You can think of this like selecting green. So we'll get hex val and set that equal to hex val shifted left by eight bits. We'll get green the same way as blue. Now that the color we want is selected, we can use the modulo operator to get two hex digits worth of data. So green is equal to hex val modulo two hex digits. Note that hex val here is different than it was in blue because we've shifted eight bits to the left. One more shift to the left will select red. So hex val equals hex val shifted left eight. Just like with green and blue, we use the modulo operator to get our red data. Remember that two hex digits is equal to eight bits, which is the amount of space that one color occupies. So red, once again, is hex val modulo two hex digits. Now that all three values are saved, we can print them out. We use string formatting to get them all in one line. Make sure to pass your colors in the correct order, red, then green, then blue. So I'll print out a string here. I'll make that look like RGB, one string, second string, and third string. And we'll use the percent sign here to attach our strings. And we'll pass in red, green, and blue in that order. We now have methods for converting between RGB and hex in either direction. We need one more method that will run the program. Our third method, convert, will ask the user which kind of conversion is desired, then use one of our other two methods to do the conversion. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this method, drop down, tab back over, and define convert. Because we want our program to run until the user is done with it, we'll create a while loop with the condition true. This loop will only exit when we use the break keyword. Type in while true, and the rest of our logic will go in here. The user will pick between the conversion types. We'll prompt the user with this message from the task instruction and save the response as a new variable, option. So option equals raw input, and I'm going to paste in the string from the instruction. We'll handle the case of RGB to hex first. We'll make an if block that checks if option is equal to one. Make sure that's the string one, not the number, because raw input will give us a string. So if option is equal to the string one, Inside the if block, we'll print a message indicating that the user selected RGB to hex, and then call our RGB hex method. The method we made earlier will handle the rest. The convert method is just a way of, for our user to get to one of our other two methods. So inside here, I'll print RGB to hex, and below that, I'll run RGB hex. Using an else if statement, We'll check if option is two. If it is, the user is selecting hex to RGB. So we can print a confirmation message and run the hex RGB method. So else if option equals two print hex RGB, with that, we'll run our hex RGB method. The third option for our user is the letter X. We'll use another else if statement to check for either lowercase x or uppercase x. If option is one of these, we'll use the break keyword to exit the while loop and end the program. So else if option equals lowercase x, or if option equals uppercase x, then we are going to just break and end the program. If the user didn't enter one, two, or x, then the input was something invalid. We use an else statement to handle all cases that we haven't already covered, and just print out a message indicating the error. Because we're in a while loop, the user will just be prompted to try again. So else will print error. And since this is the end of our loop, if the user gets this error, they'll just bump back up to the top of the loop and put in another input. All three methods are now done. Remember, these are just definitions. 
we need a call to convert at the bottom of our program. Make sure your call is all the way left aligned so that's not the part of any method definition. I'm going to minimize this, and at the bottom, all the way over to the left, I'm going to call convert. And that's going to start our program. Now it's time to test our converter. We'll run the program in the terminal window by typing Python and then the name of our program, which is rgb2hex.py. Now, if you're anything like me, you probably have some typos in there, so you'll want to go in and correct those. If you had a keen eye, you may have also noticed that I put these bit shifting operators in backwards. Uh, this is the way they should be. So while you're going through and correcting your program, make sure that these are all facing the right way. All right, so now that we've got our errors fixed, we can use our program. If you press one to convert an RGB to a hex, you can try something like uh, all red, about halfway green, and zero blue. And you'll notice that our first two digits here are very high, FF is as high as you can get. Our second is kind of in the middle with 64, and our blue digits are at zero. We can convert the other way just to confirm that things are working. Let's try the same code to make sure that we get the same values out. We'll use FF6400, and we get 255, 100, 0, just like the values we put in to generate this hex code. Then we can use X to exit. In this project, we created a Python program that converts between RGB and hex color values. We used functions, control flow, and bitwise operators to accomplish this. An understanding of bits is integral to data storage and conversion because all data boils down to bits in one way or another. I'm Matt for Codecademy. Happy coding!